Alright, good bless afternoon everybody. I tried to upload this dog on video for the past few days. I don't know what happened, but it was talking about um kind of a conversation I had with my brother um was it last week or a couple weeks ago. Anyway, he told me that he had seen our grandfather in his sleep. He said I saw, he said, Jeremy, I saw him. And um I said, you know, I hate to be the that guy, but that was not him. Um, you know, the Bible tells us a, a few different ways that, you know, the dead aren't here. The spirits are no longer here. They're not roaming this earth. Um, they're not roaming this earth waiting, waiting for us, you know. They're not paying God to peek through the clouds, you know, just to look down on, on, on little Susie a little Timmy to see if uh, to see if they're doing well they're just not once they pass from this life their judgment is set you know he got it confused and he automatically took offense to that and he's like well you believe what you want to believe and you let me believe what I want to believe and I'm like this isn't my belief this is the word of God here you know, that you want to sit here and argue. You want to sit here and argue the word of God, which is the truth. But I just keep them in my prayers. You know, I, I hate for people to kind of be um, stuck like that. And it's not that I was trying to put him down. I was just trying to give him a truth. But there's a difference between uh, living in the fantasy and accepting the cold hard truth. And today... People don't want to accept the truth at all. So we're going ahead and we're gonna go ahead and get into it with Ecclesiastics. Ecclesiastes 9, 5 through 6. And it reads, For the knowing know that they shall die. All we know is that we're going to pass on to eternity. But the dead know not anything. Right? That's what scripture says. Dead knows nothing. The dead isn't here. I'm sorry. Neither have they any more reward, so they have nothing else to gain from here. For the memory of them is forgotten, because they're not here. Verse 6, also their love and their hatred and their envy is now perished. Neither have they any more portion forever in anything that is done under the sun. So they don't have anything to do upon this earth anymore. They're not here okay <laughs> they're not here with us okay so um your loved ones are gone you know i i used to have dreams about my grandfather as well because when he passed it was such a thing when he passed because uh if you've been to charlotte into uh presbyterian hospital that thing is working around the clock um the night he passed, that was the only time that the hospital shut down. When I tell you my grandfather was like, he, he was powerful in the, in the spirit. You know, he would study the word for two hours just about every day. Except for on Sundays when he would uh, attend uh, church services via TV. He'd turn the TV in and he'd be back there participating in the church service. Get his little juice and chip, uh, whatever, for communion. He participated in church service. Other than that, Monday through Saturday, he was in that Bible. He was in his word two hours every single day. I used to wake up at night and um, he would be praying in the middle of the night. And I didn't realize how much warfare that he was going, uh, that he was going against on behalf of our family until after he passed. It just kind of seemed like that, um, that protection was gone that he provided. So, uh, I want to dip here into another scripture. Um, and at, um, before I get into that, after he passed, I had dreams about both of them as well. Uh, not knowing then that these were spirits that were trying to uh, complete covenants with me. And they absolutely did establish those covenants for years. I was under um, the spirit of lack, indebtedness, poverty, not enough. Not to mention all the crap my mother did. Boy. Anyway, 
so I want to touch on this scripture right here, and it's Hebrews 9, 27. And it reads, and as it is appointed unto men once to die. So once men have died, after, but after this is, is the judgment. You go on to judgment after you pass. You're not waiting around for the funeral. You're not waiting for somebody uh, with a slick tongue that likes to, you know, that likes to talk about they, they've seen your family. You're not waiting around for that. You're not, you're gone. Okay. So you've gone on to God and he's going to judge you by the deeds that you've done with your life. So, and I've had an experience with a wizard, warlock, medium, whatever you want to call them. Um, they actually told me that they, um, she was like, I see this woman in purple. We buried my grandmother um, in purple, and she had this brooch on. Uh, she didn't get all the details right. She got it just... She got it just enough so that my ignorant behind would take the bait at the time and say, yep, yep, that's her, that's her, that's her. Because she passed right beside me. I was picking up for dialysis. And um, right when we passed, right at the driveway to her house, I was pulling into the driveway to the house. She, like, looked over like she saw something. And she just slumped over. I looked at her, and this was um, July of 2010, so it was four months after my grandfather just passed in February. And I looked over, and I said, please don't do this to me right now. I said, please don't do this to me right now. Um, and uh, sure enough, she was gone, man. I, I couldn't get a pulse on her. And um, I ran the house to get my mother, laid the seat back, and the whole time I'm checking for a pulse. If I, I'm like, if I can get something, I can start CPR while we're in transit. Uh, she's driving. I'm like, if I can get something, if I can get a pulse on her, I can start CPR. But I didn't get anything. She was gone right then and right there. Um, so, and since then, these spirits will use those dead relatives to masquerade as your family. And uh, don't get me started on familiar spirits. Those, uh, <laughs> they get information from monitoring spirits that watch you, and they try to come to you like the like you know like somebody in your life or whatever. But I'm not going to get into that stuff. Um, we're going to get into the story of Lazarus and the rich man, and that comes from Luke 16 verse 19 through 31. And, and this really encompasses what happens after we die. Now, we see the story where, um, I'll just get started. There was a rich man, at verse 19, there was a rich man, there was a certain rich man, which was clothed in purple and fine linen, and fared sumptuously every day. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, which was laid at his gate, full of sores, and desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. And it came to pass that the beggar died, which was Lazarus, and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. And in hell, lift up his eyes, being in torments, and setteth Abraham afar off. Seeth, I'm sorry, Lord. And Lazarus in his bosom, and he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus that he may dip his finger, the tip of his finger, in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receivest thy good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things, but now he is comforted and thou art tormented. And beside all this between us, you, there is a great gulf fixed. So there's a great divide and separation between these, between the two. So that they would, um, so that they which would pass from hence to you cannot. So we can't, the two can't intertwine, because there's a great divide between them. Neither can they pass to you. That would come from thence. Then he said, I pray thee, therefore, Father, thou that wouldest send him to my father's house. For I have five brothers, brethren, that he may testify unto them, 
least they also come into this place of torment. So he's trying to get him to send Lazarus back so that he can warn his brothers. Abraham saith unto him, They have Moses and the prophets, let them hear them. And I want to stop right there at verse 29. While you were alive, you had the same resources that your brothers have. And through your actions, through your choices and your decisions, you made a choice that landed you right here in hell for all eternity. You made a choice through your actions. You have the same information they had. Remember, they just died. So that means Moses was there and the prophets were still there. Clearly, he didn't pay attention to them. Remember, uh, the Lord is close to the sick and the downtrodden. So, um, Lazarus. <laughs> All right, verse 30. And he said, Nay, Father Abraham, but if one went unto them from the dead, they will repent. So Abraham responds, If they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, though one rose from the dead. So if a, ro a dead man were to rise, he would give them the same message. It doesn't make sense for me to send a dead man back when the message is already there. So, though at this particular uh, conversation right here, we understand what happens after death. Family members, relatives, they're no longer here. They're not sitting next to you at the family. It's nice to say. It's cute to say. It really is. Don't be distracted and stuck on those who have already exchanged time for eternity don't buy into the fact that there is nothing that you have to do there's work to be done alright and I can tell you that it literally starts with you. The work starts with you. Okay? You for your bloodline. When you go before God, there's no one else that's going to be standing in front of him that's going to have to answer for the decisions that you made, for the choices that you made, for the, life, the lives that you just might have destroyed, the generations that you damned because of your disobedience. And, you know, but I want to read one more scripture, and it's Leviticus 19.31. And it says, regard not them that have familiar spirits, neither seek after wizards to, the, to be defiled by them. And I am the Lord your God. So mediums, um, psychics, palm readers, these are charlatans, and um, they work. They're workers of iniquity. Um, you know, I, I bought into a medium once that told me that was my grandmother. And it almost took my life. You know, it, it, it literally almost took my life. And it put me in, um, looking back, I understood I had to go through it, but it was, it, it was, a, it was about five years of hell. Five years of, you know, not getting ahead. Five years of always being in debt. Five years of being, um, you know, beat on. <laughs> Five years of, you know, being lied on. And, you know. And I want to make that clear that it was because it, it all started with this familiar spirit that told someone that this was my God, that, that this was what God had for me. And it never was. So I put that out there to reiterate how important it is that you stick with God and you stay away from all of this stuff that is not of him. Numbers, zodiac signs, all that crap is man-made. And when I read this passage from this book in a little bit, um, not in this video, I'm going to read this passage um, from this book in a little bit. It's going to open you guys' eyes because it... It confirmed a lot of things that I knew was going on in America, and and we're going to get in that with that with that reading. So um, 
that's the video for this one. I want to reiterate again, the dead are not with you. Your grandma, your grandfather, your aunt, your uncle, your adoptive parents, they passed on into eternity. They went on to judgment, according to, uh, not Leviticus, but Hebrews 9.27. They went on to judgment, and they've been judged. And wherever they, and, and wherever um, God put them, that's where they're going to be. They're not here no more. You know, um, there's another scripture in the Bible where it talks about how, you know, we are given thirty. Uh, God allowed people to mourn the dead for thirty days, and um. Then he allowed them to move on. You know, it, it, it took me years to get over those deaths because those were my parents. Those were my parents, essentially. I don't get me wrong. My father was always a big part of my life, but I spent most of my time with those guys. Um, so I, I saw them as that growing up. So I understand being kept and being bound um, in that for years. And... You know, always tell, always tell my kids, be better, be smarter than me. Always be smarter than me because I didn't listen or pick up this word that is given to everybody freely. And it would have saved me, um, it, 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 it just would have saved me five years of pain. Five, five and a half, six years of pain. But... Because I clearly broke God's word, it led me down a major path of destruction. And um, I thank God every day he saw fit to, and this is this is God telling me, he's like, I'm going to redeem a time. He could have left me in that mess. I was getting lied on. Uh, I was getting uh, beat. <laughs> like, I was like me. Like, I'm not, you know beating on her she beating on me God could have left me in that mess but he didn't so you know take it for whatever you want to take it for but I give it to you guys as real as I can because God told he always tells me walk in truth so I'm not going to sugarcoat it I'm not going to lie about the things that happened not going to lie about the things that did not, not going to lie about the things that people have done to me it's all part of my testimony. If my testimony can help one person get back on that uh, narrow path that leads to life and eternal life with God and get they behind off of that broad path, you can call me a sucker. You can call me a simp. You can say, oh, well, I'm going to do this. But I'm always tell the truth. So I thank you guys so much for tuning into this. And I'll be back uh, shortly with this excerpt reading here. We are in uh, Proverbs 5 for today. And I'm going to do that reading today. And that's going to be a video for the men. All right. Um, so I pray the entire armor of God over you guys, over myself and my family. I plead the blood of Jesus over all of us as well. Thank you so much, Father God, for bringing us together to hear your word today. And to get a better understanding and a grasp of how we should... Um, handle things and understand that our loved ones that have passed on have passed on they are no longer sitting here as we got from your word today they have gone on the judgment just like it says in um, Hebrews 9 27 after they have passed they go to you for judgment so we thank you for your word today father God in the mighty and master's name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, your only son, we pray amen and amen. Thank you guys for tuning in. I will have that other one up in just a moment.